everybody, it's Cinnamon Coney Archer, and today we're going to be painting this gorgeous set of oaks bowing over a path with azaleas lining the far side. It's going to be gorgeous. There's going to be the drippy moss. We're going to get into our tree textures and our crooked tree branches and lots of dappled light on the ground. I'm going to show you all of the steps it takes to create this painting so that you can create this at home. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to be reading your questions like, what is that like, lady doing? What? <laughs> like what? But that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be just going through step by step. This is a lot like a painting party. Mm. Um, so like I do a thing, you do a thing, I do a thing, you do a thing, and at the end we both have a thing. Hopefully, a painting that looks kind of like some oaks. But remember, and this is critical, and I really ask you as we begin this journey to re to know that your painting is not supposed to be a carbon copy of mine. You're on your art journey. You shouldn't be this to other people you shouldn't be judging yourself you should be however taking a nice sippy sippy mine is I, coffee today i have coffee too <sighs> breathing deeply and for a couple of hours just forgetting the problems that are bugging you in your life that is literally your first and foremost thing if some cute trees come out of it you get to hang on your wall that's just the bonus along the way Duh, this is a great time to just to kick back relax a little bit i'm gonna watch if you don't mind would you? I'm not going to paint he's along. Gonna, he's not going to He's not gonna paint along. He's just going to watch and chill out. Yeah. Actually, his job is so not chill. It's the opposite of your experience is his experience. What are you talking about? I sip coffee, watch my wife paint, hang out with the community. What's I get the best job in the world. You do have a pretty good job. I love it. <laughs> Please. This is YouTube. Don't take it too seriously. <laughs> We're being playful. It's okay. It's a good job. All right. No, I got to stop. This is an 11 by 14 kind of, it's, you know, they call these canvas panels or canvas boards. Um, so what's wonderful about these is they come in packs, they're economical, and they're widely available in North America. I get mine at Michael's, and I use my little half-off coupon. I like it a lot. If you get them too wet, they can bow. Um, if this is a very important, you know, painting and everything, you can check the links below um, and upgrade to, like, an artist panel or something. And, yes, you can use a stretch canvas. But you can also use artist paper, so it's all okay. We have our wishes, our intentions, our hopes on the canvas done in watercolor pencil. We're going to paint over these and send these into the universe. Today, we have uh, Shauna. Um, she has gone on a new adventure. She's going to be kind of like mostly off the grid. And she's going to be doing painting. She's going to be doing that. But she's really wanting to feel very supported and enforced in her new life and we just want to send her lots of light and love because i know that when we do see posts and updates from shauna they're going to be amazing she's going to be great and this is going to be an art adventure for her um rita is uh and i so have my heart goes out to this is wishing for healing from shingles honestly i would like them to be able to just treat and cure this and give people immediate relief this is a really problematic thing i've had it happen to a lot of friends and it's super painful she had a lot of questions about how to like keep being creative during this time. And remember that while you're trying to stay creative, that your first number one thing is to rest, self-care, and definitely keep those areas just cool and not hurting. Um, clean air and safety in Canada, because they've got a lot of stuff happening right now. And then this was nice. I had done a whole post about a good social media manner, <laughs> conflict resolution. And so a lot of wishes came in about uh, people who were having conflict with friends that they were hoping for resolution. So let's all send some positivity on friends that are currently having misunderstanding that they come together and realize it was all silly and it was nothing and that they're still besties forever. I'm so for that. Yeah, for sure. I love that that sparked that off and I think that's really good. Now, over here you'll notice that I have newness on my table. You do? do you see my newness? This is my hot newness. All right, so Mahat Newness is the new wave palette. Um, I haven't used it before. I went to Texas Art Supply to test it. Um, I got all of the different ones. <laughs> Man, I went a little, a little crazy. This is the timber, and it's the peel palette like I usually I use. Got it. And I know Texas Art Supply has it. I'll try to put a link down below after this is all <laughs> yeah. over with everything that's in there. This is my phthalo blue. This is my titanium white, my Indian yellow, my cad yellow, my cad red. My alizarin crimson, my quinacridone magenta, my phthalo green, my burnt sienna, my yellow ochre, my zinc white, my ultramarine blue, and this black 
happens to be uh, Mars black, but you could use lamp black. I wouldn't recommend bone black because it doesn't really have the tinting strength, but you can get away between Mars black and lamp black on this particular piece. Or a Payne's gray would work really, really well. So those are the colors that I have out. I thought about maybe adding some new colors in, but I think I'm gonna stick with this because I just wanna have fun painting it. And the first best bit that we get to do is the best, best bit. I'm gonna take a little palette knife over here. And I'm going to take just a little of my phthalo blue. See, that's like almost like a little thin bead over to my titanium white to sort of get the peep of blue sky. Because we have these gorgeous little peeps of blue sky that are peeking out. Peeking. Peeking, peeking, peeking of our painting. Oh, and let me make sure that my words are disappearing into my canvas. I'm going to miss my canvas and just make sure my brush takes this watercolor pencil. I'm gonna trust the universe to catch this for us. Whenever I put my uh, words or wishes or intentions, I just trust the universe to get it. I hand it over. It's like uh, sending in a work ticket. <laughs> <laughs> but I just trust that things will find their best possible outcome. I'm gonna load my brush up. And if you're really, really new to painting, this is a more challenging of our beginner paintings. We have all the way to like, haven't painted since kindergarten. Now, hang in with us and watch because you're going to learn some cool stuff. Hmm? Now, for the first time, since you're loading your brush for the first time, mm -hmm. I know I've struggled with this every time I've done it. Mm -hmm. Can you show them how to double load that while you're there? Well, this wouldn't be a double load. Or, or, or pull. How you know, to properly load. That's what it works. Yeah, it's for. how to properly load. So I have my little paint pops here. And you'll notice that I'm not going from the center. And I'm pulling out. I'm flipping and pulling out. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna pull it from the toe of my brush into the belly of my brush. And that is why I'm gonna dip back in water a little bit. I am thinning with water. I'm not at this stage using a glazing medium. I have glazing medium out on my palette. Now, that load is what causes your brush to go so far. Yes. With all that paint on board. Yeah, even though heavy body paint sometimes doesn't want to, you know, it's, it's heavy bodied. It wants to sit where it is. Wants to be where you put it. So you got to tell it, no, man, you got to glide around the canvas. And it's like, what do you think I am? Fluid paint? <laughs> you're like, when, you're, when I'm done with you. The paint you talks to be. me. Try not to worry for me. Try not to worry too much about me. I'll be okay. Paint talks to me all the time. I hear its little voice in my head. I'm just, this is a very light, loose covering of the canvas. Now, sometimes all. <laughs> I got to tell you, there is not a universal behavior of art materials any more than there's a universal kitchen, kitchen mixer. Like, you know, you guys know how, like, some kitchen mixers can, like, do fondant and some kitchen maker, mixers cannot do fondant? Art materials are like that. There's grades. Mm -hmm. And so, you got to get to know them because even within them, they have particular. Even within a line, certain colors are more problematic than other colors and you have to really get to know your art materials. You have, you're in a personal relationship with this, this stuff. I'm gonna just go ahead and give my whole canvas a coat of this blue because that's gonna help me start building up those wonderful art layers. If I, I can get darker as I come down towards the bottom, right, because I've got ground, so I can darken that up like you might want to. You don't have to, it's just something you can do. And maybe the lower third of this will be dark. And I'll just blend this nicely through. It's so soft. It looks almost like it's out of focus. And that's sort of a fun bit, right? When it's soft and it looks like it's almost out of focus, it's kind of nice. I got a little dark stripe up there. So what I'm doing is I'm wiping out my brush and I'm going to just blend that through. Because I'm just trying to get a nice little beginning mm -hmm. in the painting. We're going to make it look three-dimensional, but it certainly is not factually three-dimensional. I'm going to sit my coffee and contemplate the nature of the universe. Mm, I will contemplate the nature of chat. <laughs> How's chat doing today? <laughs> doing pretty good. Actually, we've got quite a crowd here with us all hanging out. They're really looking forward to this. So this is kind of cool. This is going to be a really beautiful painting. You guys are going to love it. And remember to take a deep breath. Let it out. Sometimes we carry a lot of stuff with us into the studio and into our space. And it's important to put that down so you can pick up this creative time and give your mind and body and spirit a little rest from its day. You may be making this late at night when your little ones are in bed and you finally got some quiet time and you're bleary eyed going, I know I can still paint. It's happening. I just want to say hi to all you late night mamas. Bye.
All right, let me hair dry this. So while she's doing that, I'm going to say thank you to you guys for uh, everyone who's just joining us for the first time. Uh, it was really nice to have you guys with us. This is a really special time for Cinema and I to be able to come out here and be live and hang out with you guys and uh, share this painting with you. So thank you very much. If you'd like more information on this project or any of the other projects we're doing, you can check, check in the link in the description down below where you can find the artsherpa.com and a direct link to this project. And on there you'll find traceables, link to the materials that you might need. There's a bunch of resources we try to put out there. And also if you, on the landing page of theartsherpa.com, you'll find information on how to sign up for our SMS notifications. So uh, right now there's a, uh, a message, a number that you can text here in the U.S., but we are, we are in a internominal negotiation. To, internominal? Internominal negotiation to get some international nomifications happening. But, you know, it's... You uh, know, gnomes, they got to learn to work together. They, they actually, it's not so much the gnomes. They have no problems. Is it it's the reindeer. Really? It, I was surprised. It was the reindeer. So we'll get into that later. That's some internominal relationship. Drama. We yeah, try to keep out of the drama on the YouTube. I Don know. actually tries to keep me out of the drama because I want to get in it. When you get right in it and like be like, no, da, 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 da. it sounds like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I got sucked in. <laughs> so the first thing, I'm going to do a couple cool things. I've got a little sea sponge here. We like to call it a shrimp nugget because they look a little bit like nuggets. And I'm going to do a little background texture, a little distant stuff. And so my first bit is I'm going to take a little of my green and my burnt sienna. I'm going to mix them together. Just these two at first. The brown is going to kind of just, you know, take some of that crazy saturation out of it. And then we're going to take a little of this color to one of my very favorite colors, Indian yellow, which is it's hue, but it's based in a historical color. Right? So Turner would have loved this color, right? He would have thought this was really cool. Though so I'm much less romantic about that since seeing the movie Turner. I was like, I don't know why we made this movie. All right. <laughs> I'm going to take my little nugget. And you can see this nice little green that I made. This is going to be for the upper bits of my trees. And it's just a way to start talking about some of this distant foliage. And see how when I make that little tap, it gives me a little texture like faraway leaf. And we're going to just bring a little bit of this here. We want to leave lots of little pops of blue sky. It can be a good idea to turn your sponge. I'm touching very lightly, you know, like imagine that you're just puffing something delicate, delicate little baby naminals, getting little, don't put paint on animals, but, you know, just, just little background areas. And enjoy this space, right? Enjoy your little puffies and your little taps and the beginning of little trees. Lots of ways to do this, guys. We're just showing you a way that you can do it. When there's a paint, there's a way. Rub, 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 rub. I like that. When there's a, where there's a paint, there's a way. There's a paint, there's a way. I see artists do it all the time. They're like, I have no paint, but I have this cup of coffee. Masterpiece. I Instagram have, sensation. I have no paint, but I must express. <laughs> That's right. <gasps> You've seen me do it. You're like, what are you doing with the ketchup? And I'll look up like I got caught. <laughs> look over. <laughs> what ketchup? Where? Look the other way. It's gone. The salt and sugar drawing on the uh, Denny's table. Yeah, I don't think I left a good impression with his family when we were first dating. <laughs> 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 they're, they're okay with me now. Mostly. You know, mostly okay. <laughs> I should probably check in on that. <laughs> I'm making an assumption here. <laughs> you, I got to check in every once in a while, too, so it's okay. <sighs> family. Family. You're born with them. You're born with them. You love them. And a, and a shout out to John's family. His, I love all my his, his Aunt Debbie. Oh, Debbie's a tried and true Sherpette. She is. She, my Aunt Debbie is is awesome Sherpette and hopefully going to come paint with us soon. Hopefully, hopefully. And Lori and Sherry. Lori and Sherry. They're, 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 they're going to be Sherpettes in our local uh, event coming up. Maybe. I'm hoping. And we're far. We don't have any expectations. We're going to Tennessee, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. The Pigeon Forge. Where the they 
The Pigeony Forge. The Were Forge they... of Pigeons. I had to look up all this history on that to design the shirt. And if you're going, shirts will be there. Mm -hmm. All cool. <laughs> oh, sorry. Ow. But for the rest of your mugs, out of luck. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know if I am or I'm not. <laughs> I just don't want to start nothing. <laughs> so just coming back here. And I'm not, I'm just, it's nice to have little bits of this texture before we start putting our big focal branches into the space. Okay, because what we're trying to do is just talk about these distant pops of color. And the softness of the sponge really lets me lets me do this. You can do a mm. kitchen sponge. Mona has a really good, uh, oh, actually Maggie. Has Maggie, hi Maggie. Mona, Mona helped me catch this question, so thank you. Thank you, Mona. Thank Mona's you, Mona. so amazing. So Maggie says, when I use the sponge, I, I find I get too much paint globs. Is there a way to tone that down? Okay, yeah, and I think maybe I'm doing it. You guys aren't necessarily seeing me do it. I've got to do a little bit sort of right here, and I need to get into my deeper green to do it. So I'm going to show you. See how I'm doing this swirl around? I go swirl, swirl, and then I look at it. You can always tap off on your palette to make sure that you don't have too much. You don't want this wet or soaking. You want this to be mildly damp. Um, the paint is drying on it as you're working with it. So sometimes if you've only got one or two good sea sponges, you may need to go wash those out periodically throughout your project. Now, I'm going to make some of these distant little dark, darker green foliages right here. There were some folks that are going to, while you're, while you're not make, making sure now, if you're getting those big globs, I want to ask you some of this before I go on to my other question. Oh, yeah, I'm still sponging for a while, so you can ask me globby questions as much as you want. Oh, my glob. So, there, we just did Adventure Time. <laughs> Who left? I That's did. a test. <laughs> so you're making sure that you have it a little bit watered down and not on too thick. No. No? No. In fact, if you have too much water in the sponge, it's a problem. Sponge is damp. Damn. Mildly damp. Mildly damp. Okay. You should not be able to squeeze out drops of water. That's good to know. Okay. I do this little circular motion to move the color through the sponge, and you can uh -huh. see it's very lightly there, and then I tap off on a second thing. You ah, can tap off okay. on a plate. So you're clear. You're testing the, the, that I'm off. I'm not mad at him. I'm just being emphatic. So you guys at home are like, wait, no, okay. <laughs> that's right. That's Well, that's why I'm asking these questions. This I'm going to bring a little of this green up here. I just feel like an even some little bit of of this darker color will benefit the overall painting i feel could be wrong but i feel now strongly what i don't want to do is just sponge everything evenly i want little breaks here wandering around in and out all kind of around i want to find little mental breaks little mental spaces that things are pretty chillaxed about so you can see I'm just sponging here. And that's because I know I've got a lot of sponging down here to do. So I've got some room to do it. Room to do it. Getting a little bit of my green on there. There's some really interesting distant far green that's quite bright. And you usually don't see that in a painting. And so that's going to be really nice. Now, I am going to rinse out my sponge a little bit. Now, my, my hand's in a jar of water spilling all over the table. You probably have the luxury of going to a sink. <laughs> so enjoy that luxury. I'm going to take a towel and make sure my sponge isn't too damp. I hope you guys are liking the picture. And picture, I hope that's helping. Mm, I, think, I think so. We do have a traceable. So if you're like, I just cannot deal with these crazy tree branches, that is there. That's happening. I'm going to take a little of my green here. And I'm going to make one of my very favorite colors. I'm going to get a lot of my Indian yellow. A lot of it. And I'm going to start with my zinc white. Zinc, 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 zinc white. Lots of Indian yellow, lots of zinc white. And I don't want any bright pops of white, so I'll make sure that this is thoroughly mixed through. So there's no, like, if you need to go up and down like this, go up and down like that, go brrrr. It actually is quite satisfying, so, <laughs> you know. Enjoy it. I especially like part. I yeah. can't do that. You know, this is that next little layer. Little bits of this. See how it's a little brighter, a little more yellow green? Yeah. Huh. Just a little bit of that in there. But now you have this deep value. So you're building up a believability of this yellow leaf stuff. 
this is kind of an involved painting, so enjoy your process in it. Now this is, you know how there's some puzzles, they've got like a lot of pieces to them? Yeah. This is a many piece puzzle. Don't take out your little bits of blue. You need your little bits of blue. But be sure even as you're defining spaces that you're leaving those there. Now I can come over here to my titanium white now and a little bit of my Indian yellow. And there's this green sort of still on the palette. And I can come here and start popping little highlights. And we're going to have one crazier poppy highlight after this. Maybe two. Why limit ourselves? We'll just go with this until we feel like we've got these nice distant trees. Look how I'm leaving little bits of light here. I'm lightening it up. I'm not taking out all my dark. And that's because we need to have some of these value spaces in the sponge. Now I'm going to come get a little part. I'm going to go into this part of the sponge. And I'm going to get my cad yellow. This is real cadmium. And so here's my thing on this. Um, you can have a severe allergy to cadmium. Cadmium has an ingredient in it that is known in the state of California to cause cancer if you ingest it or breathe it. Um, so you'll see a lot of warning labels on all cadmium products. But this is what they know about cadmium right now. You have to put it in your lungs or inside your body. It's like a metal and it can poison over time. This is not the cadmium that you see in batteries because this has a special coating on it. It's actually there to help you and the people that make the pigments to make it less absorbable. That said, right, I've used it for years. I've not had a reaction. I don't have a buildup of cadmium in my body. That said, you can have an allergy to true cadmium, but you could use a bright, handsy yellow. You can use hue. Anytime something says hue, it does not generally have the pigment in it. Alizarin hue does not have real alizarin pigment in it, which would be quite toxic. Uh, cadmium hue has no cadmium in it. There's a, a bunch of products without that. And there's a bunch of new yellows out that are just as bright. So don't feel limited. I'm just giving you the, the heads up. I like cadmium. It does a very particularly bright green that I'm super duper fond of. You're about to see it happen right here. I'm making sure I don't have any weird pops of yellow because I really, really want to get this bright color on here. Here we go. And you'll see it's quite bright. Got to get a little white into it. You can brighten it up even more. See how bright that yellow is? And that's what you're, you're playing with is those spring greens. It's fun to do this. Always read your paint label. If your painting student paints, it's not even an issue. They don't put any of the real pigments in your student paint. That being said, still read your paint labels. You know, sometimes things can't be put in an airbrush. Sometimes things can't be, you know, heated up to a certain degree. It never hurts you, even with your craft paints, to just check those things a little bit. And remember that allergies are also a real thing. So if you're working with a new product, I was just working with a new product that um, I had a real allergic reaction to. Sorry. See how bright that is? Yeah. What I'd like to add to that is, is that there are folks at those paint companies that work really hard to cram a lot of information on there. Mm -hmm. It's worth a quick look at your tube. It really is. Uh, the reason I paint with Pro Paints is companies, besides the quality and besides the fact that the coverage is amazing, um, these companies often really, really think about that. I'm going to go ahead and give some bright green into this space. I may come back with some deeper green, which will be fun. I'm back with my deeper green. See how I can just play this up? Yep. Play these value sets against each other into that space. There's some, there's some depth there. We got trees coming and everything, so there's a lot to do. And this isn't even the last of our sponging because we're going to sponge a little bit some of the bushes that are coming down here. Let me just put this right here just to have it. It's nice to have this green back here pumping out. So hopefully at this point you see lots of little little pops of leaves and events. Little pops of leaves and events, and they're bright and they're saturated, and that's lovely. I'm liking that. 
Now, the next layer of things that we get to put in is we start to put in our distant branches, and those are really fun to do. I might actually do a lot of this with an angle brush today. Shall we use an angle brush, my friends? I'm trying to decide between a 5 8 angle and a half inch angle. I think a half inch angle. Maybe I go five inch angle because I don't want to be really working very hard. What are you doing there? You're just deciding brushes. So I'm going to load up my brush with my burnt umber, as you do, as you might want to. And I'm going to actually get even a little bit of my ultramarine blue into it. These actually play together to make some really gorgeous grays and greens. If you really, really want to gray it out, you can even add look at that, just get in there, graying these colors out. You can always add black, but it can be nice to use black sparingly in a painting. You just have to see how that's going to be. So let's go back and let's take this little interesting little twiggly bit and let's make a little faraway twiggly bit. Oh, on the edge of the brush. And come here and maybe press a little firmer and then come out. The other thing about not putting the black in, see how this is a bit transparent? It's a little bit light. And it's allowing some stuff to show through. We'll help this push this back into the distance of our paint. We have some distant little kind of branches that could be coming up here. So we'll just come across and be like, hey, you're a little branch. You're a distant little fellow. I like you. I'll talk about you a bit. You have a little friend partner over here that's coming off over to the right. He seems friendly. Might as well be in a friendly forest, right? Yeah. So Halloween. Then not. <laughs> then all the rules will change. But we're just putting in distant little little thoughtful little branch ideas that are out there are happening. I find it can be nice to um you can even say apply that there's a little kind of cross branch up here. Maybe a little bit one. So Debbie was asking how hey, you Debbie. Do your, how you do your lines so softly. So I'm not pressing down very hard. My brush is really my friend in a lot of this journey. I'm going to just make some little branches that are here and there. And you can see I'm just using like the little hairs. Can the camera catch the brushwork in that way? I think so. Let's see if we can show that maybe a little bit. I'll come over mm -hmm. here and do some branches. You can do these branches with me, these distant branches, if you like. I'm just barely pressing. I'm using the edge and the shaping of the brush. to create some lines. The paint's also playing a part. Paint is coming off my brush very nicely. I want to make sure that I've got lots of stuff happening here. And it's okay that these lines be soft and, and barely there because it's that which is going to make it feel like this is a very full space. And I think that is one of the things that I like about this paint is the fullness of that space. My mic just came off, huh? Oh, I heard it. I'll come. I don't know if you guys can hear me anymore. Yeah, they can hear you just a second, but okay. let me come fix that. I'm going to just make one nice, thoughtful little branch right here. And then John's going to come fix my mic while I sip some coffee. We could do that. Yeah. Thank you so much, babe. I so appreciate all the help with all the equipment. I mean, I know this is what we do now, but <laughs> I still am appreciative of it. Isn't that nice? Just a little bit of those little branches sort of distantly poking there. Putting things in. Love you. Thank you. Have a kiss. Hi. Sherpa works for kisses. <laughs> All right. So I am going to continue to just play with these. Now, other things you're going to notice in these little, in these distant little logs and things. And I've got glazing medium here. You could always work glazing medium almost in the way um, some decorative artists work floating medium. 
you can work it into the brush and it'll help slow down the drying time of the paint. And I'm going to make some light areas with my gray just on the brush. And maybe come here and uh, talk about some little spots of light that are tickling some of these distant trucks. Because why not? It's fun to do. This one is quite light, actually. Into its little space. And I'm even maybe going to get a little of my yellow ochre on here, work it into the brush. And that's going to kind of add a little yellow to it. Again, work it in, work it in. And help to work things in. Get me just going. John has pointed out I spent a lot of time on my palette. Oh, no, it's, it's, I think that what it is is that, uh, having observed things that you spend that I think that a lot of artists spend a lot of time mixing and preparing on the on the on the palette mm -hmm. before they go to the canvas and there's a lot more time preparing to put a stroke down than there is putting the stroke which makes sense I think that's super true though I wasn't being like you were picking on me oh, no, I was I just saying that's the thing that you pointed out I hadn't noticed I, I had neither but I was I was just was sort of adding to the you know I think it's interesting too you know, you can always come back in and you've got your black, you can work that in and you can grab that into your brown. It can even be nice to grab a little bit of blue, which cools it. So when I add yellow to a highlight or blue to a shadow, I can actually play with how my eye works and make something recede or seem farther away. Ooh. Yeah. And I've been really enjoying looking at this moss, like how we're going to do the moss when we do the bits of the moss. I think that's pretty fun. I may also dip my brush in some water to improve the flow. Work, work, work. And I might make just a few of these darker little bits. See, just on that little edge of that brush. I have lots of little brushes in my line, but there's also lots of little brushes out there in the world. And I really enjoy to demo them. That was one of the reasons why I really like my brush maker. She was like, yeah, you can use the other stuff. I'm like, yay! Because you can't be, like, wonderful to have tools. But the only essential part of your art studio is you. Everything else is just for fun. So I feel like we've got a little group of, little group of something happening there, right? Yeah. Now we can get back and have some fun. I'm going to get my sponge a little damp again. And create that next little layer that could be going on. So maybe I'll get some little yellow into here. And I don't mind mixing some little Indian yellow into that. Getting into my green. There we go. Just finding that next pop of green. And you can come and put some of those branches behind some leaves. See how we're doing? Oh, yeah. You know, don't be afraid to pop some of these behind some things. That you might have to say, hey, you're behind some stuff too. So it's good to keep that around and keep playing, and maybe I'll put a little bit in front there. That'll be peeking up as another branch comes behind it, and I think that's going to make a nice little passage, a little spot in our distant little odd tree branches. I'll let that float there. For a second. Now I'm going to carve in some shaping and everything down here. And we get to start having some real fun layering in our trees and our Spanish moss and some of our distant stuff. So in this space, we've got this wonderful walking path. I'm going to get my big brush so I can do this a nice big stroke. I'm going to rinse out. And let's get a little of our burnt sienna and our burnt umber on our brush together. Like you do. There we go a nice bit of little color. And you can get a little bit of your ultramarine blue. You can see really quick why this is a favorite color of landscape artists. And to write about here, you know, we're going to just very loosely start to talk about the leaves on the ground. Just brushing back and forth. See this sort of like little pulling back and forth mark that I'm making, just blocking in our our land, our, our earth. 
You know, we can always come back with something darker like our black and darken that up. Absolutely doable. You could come in with Dox Purple too. But it's important to just get these layers of color. And now even the blue pulling through this transparent paint creates sort of some edge to the forest floor. I can come in and get a little of my black and my green worked into this brush. See how I'm doing? But the other color's still in it, so it's almost grayed. Because you can't be in the south and not see this grayed out green, which is really gorgeous and really beautiful. And so I'm going to take the corner of my brush, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the base shape of my first bush. Boom, 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 boom. There it is. And around, and I will loosely and relaxedly paint that in. You may paint it in in a general sense of panic if it helps you feel better. But I highly recommend just being like, you know, I just got to get this weird lumpy shape. I'm not under a lot of pressure yet. Look at this weird little lumpy shape. It sort of came up, it dips down, it goes up again. Here's a little bit that ticks out. You know, you can then get some of your glazing medium which is this stuff, Gloss Glazing Liquid by Golden. This is a singular product to this company. Um, I, have, I do feel that Floating Medium does a similar thing because what it lets you do is slow down the drying time of your paint and glaze. And a retarder, right, something that slows the paint down can actually prevent the paint from drying, which is why I've stopped recommending it really to beginners because I think you can actually very easily undermine your whole painting. I'm going to put some of this dark color over here, you know, just in general to the right. And then I'm going to bring a little bit of it, get a little bit more of it loaded into our brush. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Just over here a little bit into the... I know we've got bits of this in the path. Coming back this way. Move my jar. Things blocking my visual line of sight. You don't want to block your line of sight. Mess you up. But just pulling that in. And now we've got this next little bush. So I'm going to get a little more of my brown into the mix. And some of my green. There we go. Fun stuff. This one came up kind of high. So I might make this shape. See how it goes wiggling. I'm on just the corner. I'm not really drawing. There is some... Blocking and drawing and painting, but one of the reasons that I as a teacher have taken up the mantle of like you don't really have to draw to paint is because we do a different practice a little bit than people who draw. I think they're fabulous skills and I think they're both learnable and I highly recommend learning it for your overall art enjoyment. But I also recognize that they don't have to be necessarily learned in a traditional order order for you guys to be successful. And I've seen so many of you be successful. Regardless, let's bring this down here. Let's go wiggle back and forth in this spot. Isn't that nice wiggle? Bring that forward. And we're kind of shaping out a bunch of these little bushes to think about that can be just talked about here. I'm just going even more into my little brown. And again, we're going to take this down, gosh, almost to here. Just talking a little bit about some of this stuff far off bushes. Now we've got to get into some green and we've got to pull things forward, but we're putting in these layers of paint and we're making quite a lot of difference. I'm going to go ahead and dip my brush in some water and work this through, see how you do. Just make sure that we're all covered and well thought out. Thinking about the thing, I love that there's this wild sort of branch that comes up here. I find sometimes I like working back and coming forward. That is not the only way to paint. I'm rinsing out my brush. That's just a thing I like to do. I'm going to get my um, phthalo green and my Indian yellow, and I'm going to work those together. And right back here where I feel like there's going to be this bunch of Kind of like this little tuck of green space, right? We have this little tuck of the green space back here. 
I'm sure some of it will come forward, but this is that little bit going back in the back. I can come in, I can load up a bunch of my Indian Yellow onto the brush and a little of my Zinc White. And even start to talk about maybe in that downward stroke, some of the patches of light that I'll be really going into later. But I can say, hey, I know they're here. I can pop a little of these colors here and there, knowing you're going to get into them. So you can kind of see how that's greened up right there. Now I'm going to get back into my angle brush and I'm going to get my black and my brown. I'm going to work those back and forth together. I might even grab some zinc. The thing I like about zinc is it doesn't really change the color, but it does impact, you know, how you might experience the painting. And I'm going to just start talking about this, this trunk that's right here. A lot of it's going to be behind so many other trees. I'll lighten the base of it right there. There's some light on it. You can see I'm just sort of popping some of that light with the zinc. Softly concentrate that light to the forward face of this tree. See how we're doing? There we go. Lightly to the forward face of that tree. I'm rinsing, rinsing, rinsing out. Rinsing out. And there's some interesting little bits of things that are happening back here. There's a little bit of our yellow, and it's just tinged with a small amount of green. It's so bright. And it's sort of back here. There's some, some of this coming down. You can get some white into this if you need to really lighten it, really pull it up. Talk about these little bits. See, I'm just using the corner of my brush to make those little textures. And they and they sort of are popping out from what's behind it. There's a bit of this right here. Wiggle the brush, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. We're just getting some of that concentrated color. And you can always get right into your green. Come underneath here and talk about some of that. If you ever need to darken that green, it's an interesting thing. Grab a little of your phthalo blue, and you'll get that sort of magical forest depth. Look at that. We're just wiggling right here. Talking about that distant green. Take it right down to here. Just break up this space. See how there's a little light right here. These edges are uneven. Come right here and just use all the sides of the brush. I'm not at all recommending damaging a brush at any point anyway. I'm just recommending letting the brush work for you when you're trying to do, you know, some value play. So I'm back into my yellow here. Really, really into that. I want to catch some sunlight. And I think I'm going to tip a little branch right there. See how that works out as the paint evolves. And I'm just on the corner. And you can see how this is just now playing, isn't it? Ah, look at that little thing just popped out of the... The distant space. Let's let's give another little branch like that back here. Just some. Play with it. Enjoy it. Let's look back. Now we've got some distance. Now I'm going to take my very yellow green, and I'm going to come right here along this part of the trunk. I'm going to pull this. Back. See how I'm doing? Yeah. 
just using this angle brush. Angle brushes are powerful tools. Uh, my favorite angle, I have a half inch angle in the Art Sherpa brushes. It's really amazing. Um, there are a ton of angles in the short handles and the ruby satins. And they are lovely. Well liked by many, many, many artists. Just loading up. More white. Look at that. We're just gonna let's really lighten this. Let's really lighten this color and really get some tone to it. So we got something quite quite dramatic against here. Look at how that is. And then we can pull a little. Let's get back up. I'm getting back there. Go back there. Now it's interesting. I'm gonna work this into my brush, this color. You can see it's quite light. And I'm going to give a little brown into it. A little more yellow. And I want a lot of white. I'm trying to make a very warm but grayed out highlight. Hopefully you can see that there. And I'm going to come along the front of this tree. Tap that back a little bit. A lot of thought for a little bit of a tree, I know. But let's look back. Pulling back into the distance. That's a great color to get because we're going to be all in that craziness for our moth. So that's working wonderfully. I'm enjoying that very much. I'm going to sip my coffee. Hopefully I don't need a microwave. Oh, darn it, I need to microwave it. Yep. <sighs> I will answer. Oh, yes. We have. My most beloved of all my children who hurts my coffee. I actually love them all. Whoever's currently here for coffee. <laughs> it's Number preferential. One. <laughs> you know, you look, you know how to buy buy my wife's self. Look, I know how to wake her up in the morning with the Starbucks. So who cup. feels frustrated with green on green? Um, the Raise Hulk. Hands. The Incredible huh? Hulk. I don't really, you know, I was so into him as a kid, but I look back down, I'm like, I don't know if that's not, I don't know. I There's like a the lot Hulk. of rage in the Hulk. Hulk but smash. I, would say, I like Hulk. Yes, Hulk smash. All right, so I'll put a little more cad yellow. We've got our in, we've got you know I think our Indian yellow is still quite, quite lovely. Quite lovely. These are wonderful colors. You could really play with a, a a cad yellow light in this particular painting too. I'd try not to make you guys go out and get like a ton of colors, but you know if it was just on my own, I probably would play with like a little cad yellow light and a little nickel uh, yellow. Fun play with you're so you're the best mm -hmm. okay i have branches i have to i think i will have a visitor yeah <laughs> i'm gonna get a little bit oh, of my yeah the back door the dog was <sighs> i know i'm just getting my brown twixels. and my twixels this is gonna she... be and i'm adding some blue to it uh just to cool it a bit. Let's see how this is as we go forward. I'm gonna talk about maybe this weird little branch is gonna come up here. I think it's kind of an interesting color. So let's wander that. I am really paying attention to where it could be going. Because to really get these southern oaks, you've got to catch these strange bends. These strange little value sets. I feel like that. Now I'm going to bring some of this like down a bit. I'm going to come back with the bush in front of it. I'm just, I'm just wanting to see if I can capture that wanderingness and that's really hard when you're new to painting because it's already hard to paint trees but when you paint trees that are doing like really unexpected bits of kit how do you how do you talk about those just you have a lot of hair admirers today i am i having a hair day you're having a very good hair day it's just by accident i tell you what i'll tell you what is by accident i'll tell you what I'm gonna get a little of the zinc on my my white there, and I'm gonna just come to the front here and just 
can I'll pick up a couple colors. Let's uh let's make sure that we've we highlight maybe a branch here and there. And your cat's tongue in it? I'm just cat's tongue in. This is a number four cat's tongue, and I think it's a really lovely brush if you're trying to paint free. Or really just anything. It's just a really lovely brush. You can do a lot with a cat's tongue. Nice multi purpose tool. It kinda is. Yeah, you know, just it, it sort of is just wonderful. And I'm gonna get a little of this gray on here and let's grab a smidge of our green. Oh wait, so let's get into our yellow ochre. That's a bit. And let's make sure that we are mossing some of this down. I'm gonna moss some of this down. If you guys are okay to add some moss already. Here and there, I want to grab some moss. Hopefully it'll layer well. Get the moss down. And if you need to pop a little highlight on your moss, and you will, have your, you know, your titanium white. Play those two whites against each other. A lot of moss in the south. This is a actually it's a parasite to the tree. As much as we all like it, as much as we, us southerners get all excited about this stuff, it's not good for your plants because <laughs> it, it it you know it feeds off of them. But I like to have some of this you know happening here. Before. And I can always add a little bit more in. But that let's get back and see how that's coming. Oh, we have some moss. So not. You know, I just hop through it painting by any means. But a painting worth visiting. I'm gonna rinse out. I'm gonna play with a couple of things. I think that I wanna play with maybe a little of my my uh, green. Put out a little more phthalo green. A dark bush in the in the distance. Some of its little friends. I'm just trying to see how I feel about that. Let's get some little yellow ochre on. And I'm going to come right here. And I'm going to play with this space. I see some different things that I want to do in this space. I'm going to bring this up. This is the phthalo green in my yellow ochre. And notice the wiggle in my brush. I'm coming along here and I'm making little highlights. Now I'm going to get my brush sort of loaded up. Let's get into our magenta, maybe our alizarin and crimson together. Let's mix these two together. They're sort of friends. And let's tap using just the cat's tongue. Some of this. Probably like right there. Let's, let's make a little bow of that. A little bow. Quite heavy at the bottom. There's some, you know, green in the center. We'll come back and think about that because we're trying to talk about these first little bits. What's really interesting, I'm going to work, work, work this. You can get some of the Indian yellow in there. And then if you hit your uh, little zincs, you get this very, you can start talking about this distant little fellow. It's off my ear again. Is it the earring? What's happening? I can hear it. I'll be right back. I'll be over there. I'm so frustrated with it today. I'm just tapping this out. See, I'm just tapping this little branch out. If you if you have azaleas, you know, it, I don't feel like it's on at all. There, I, I just got to take it on. You know, you can always grab a little of your alizarin to create some shadow. You can always get some of your magenta. Look at that magenta playing. Remember, magenta, these little things can just be little taps of color, right? That are just here and there, and they're in the distance, and they're a little bit more magenta and core. I'm going to get some zinc on there. On the top of this, with just that. Look at that pink top. Get my zinc into that. Zinc, zinc, zinc. Give me a little of that on the top of that in here. I like to work my brush into the color so that I can play out those ranges. And again, the top of these little bushes. 
back, which is quite nice. We'll go in the distance. Look, distant azalea is having a whole little. There, one. And we can play over here as we come forward. We've just got these branches we've got to talk about coming down. So one thing that I've got to do is I'm going to get my, my brush with my brown and my black and ultramarine blue. And I could say, in front of this fellow, let's get our white into it so we can really see our trunk. Right, right here in front of this little fellow. Coming up. And again, I gave you guys a traceable so you could negotiate through this fairly well. I'm going to come over here almost and even try to reverse construct it back to get my arc where I'm going to want it. Build that back up. I'll load into my brown. You can see as I load into my brown, what that's going to do is it's going to create some, some warmth into that particular part of the tree. And let's paint out. These are substantial branches. They are real objects within the painting themselves. Because of their weight, because of the way that they bend and go through the painting. So we've got to find a way to talk about each of these. As we're going back. And I really like to get into my yellow ochre to make this sort of sunlit gray. And then we can just really easily be like, okay, we'll do a patch of light coming back here. Maybe towards the base of this tree, another little beautiful patch of light working into my yellow ochre. I may need to miss my palette fairly soon. And then of course the top of this, I've got to start creating little dapples of light. Look at this little dapple of light. Lovely. Dappling of light. And I love to see the painting from, when John shows me the painting from a distance, because then I can see how the painting is doing on its value. Because the painting has to work on its values, which is like how light or dark something is. Right. You're constantly playing with that. You'll be coming over and getting your titanium white, which is going to do the most to lighten your values. So you can put little bits of that. If you want to be cheeky and get some tad yellow in there to really warm some of that sunlight. See how we can do there? Just really warm some of it. You don't have to warm all of it. You might want to warm some of it. Looking at that. Quite lovely. Now, all through this space, all through here, we've also got um, on the top of this little fellow, and I might get some of my green and my yellow ochre at first to talk about it. He's the top of this branch. And I'm just tapping little, just tap, 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 and it's up and down, it's meandering. And get some just phthalo right here on there. Pull some of that in. That's a darker value. So let's get some of the white worked into my brush and some of the yellow worked into my brush. And we'll just grab a little bit of the screen. So we find the top of that, those little mossy bits. That's a white. 
just right on the top. Making sure we catch that. Building up a branch right there. Rinsing out. I'm going to get some just black and a little of my blue together. And I'm going to come along the bottom of this. Oh, little crookedy branch because I want some of it to really show. And then I might even pull in a bit of a shadow right here. Every once in a while, put in shadow coming through. And let's get back and see how our values are playing for us. Values are playing really well for us. This mm -hmm. is a hard painting to do because there's a lot of crazy lighting in it. There is a lot, but this is really beautiful, though. It's beautiful. It's fun. It's worth the fight. Some pieces are worth the fight. So I'm going to get my brush. I'm going to get it loaded with my yellow. I'm gonna... And I'm working it into that green I had earlier. So I get this very, like, you remember that crayon that's that yellow green? Yeah, that, yeah, that uh, picture. I'm going to have to shrink it down a little bit up there. Right, I'm going to come right here. I'm making quite a bright color, but a light color. And in this space, I'm going to make sure that there's a couple spots. Of this delicious little sunlight. Maybe even a little rough up of like, see how we did? Oh, that's so lit beautifully back there. Yeah. You can even take some of this bright bit and play it up here. Play it up here. I think. Now, coming back here from different places, we have so many interesting wiggly little branches. They'll have little bits of the, the moss and stuff uh, coming down. Let's talk about those little downward branches. And I think what's going to be important is to make sure that your brush is flowing the paint out. So I'm getting my, my golden glazing medium and I'm working that through. And I'm going to just come in here and try to catch some of the ones that are standing out to me. And maybe they're, they're overall sort of shape space. I'll be putting some of my bushes back to layer these into their their place within the paint that I want to just get them blocked in. If I, if you're ever having and I don't know where it went, so I guess I can't do it. But if you're ever having problems with your palette having enough moisture, you can always bring your water forward. But what you're trying to do is thin your heavy body paint for flow, and then you use the strength of it for texture. There we go. See how now I have a nice flow? Sometimes you have to work to find the flow of your paint. A mixture of water to acrylic. Keep that brown going in there. Uh, there's certainly some branches that come down from here. We don't know all from where, do we? And then maybe this one's a little more brown, and I'm working the tip of the brush. Little wiggly bit there, and I'm trying to talk about how maybe somebody coming over here. Work that paint through. Little bits of these branches in the background, having their little moment. So in chat, there's been we've been discussing, you know, the collection of art supplies, paintings. You know that uh, I never let any, I, I never sell any of your paintings. We all have, you know, our own sort of art hoard. And uh, I'm not sure if it was Lori or Jennifer, or Kate, who said it, but. Uh, it was a uh, no, no. We're not um, we're not hoarders. We're art preppers. 
in the in, in the in the in, in the uh, upcoming apocalypse, we're all going to have craft supplies. Yeah, I'm gonna be the I'm gonna be your local like uh, brick and mortar for sure. I'll have so much. <laughs> I'll hook you up. We'll be okay. We'll, we'll we'll be fine. We'll have stuff to do when the power goes out. We will have so much to do when the power goes out. I'm gonna get a little of this yellow ochre into that mix I've been doing. This is going to be, you know, the color I'm using for highlights. I might even work some uh, zinc white in there so that it's a noticeable highlight. And I'm going to start picking different little bits of branches to, to pick out and create little highlights on. Oh, I keep hearing the dog snoring. I was like, what is that noise? It's a dog snoring anyway. There can be one there. and Catch that on the tip. and. Not everywhere, but just a couple places where tapping. So you can see I went right here and I tapped a little bit. I tapped right there. I'm going to maybe tap some here. I know I've got another little branch that's going to be coming forward, sort of layering over all of this. But I want that sense of density in my background. And so I recognize that I've got to build that up. And if I want to build my bushes up, I've got to get that in there. Now, I've got so much moss and stuff happening in places. So I'm going to get my yellow and my black, like I've been doing, and really work that in. And I'm going to get my just ultramarine. It's going to make a very gray, dead color. But if you're looking at your moss, you're like, oh, well, that's super helpful. <laughs> that's the one I'm looking for. And so ultramarine is a really great landscape color. It does a lot of these muted bits that can be so hard for us to find. Just make sure we're getting through here well. I'm just pulling some mosses down. Some Spanish mosses. You see I'm just using the brush. Help me create these. Pulling it down. Now, there was a really interesting question Let's that came come up. Come here and here. take these to the end right there. There's, I'm happy to answer all questions. Now, this actually kind of is a color theory versus pigment versus paint. Okay. So, can't you mix any color from the three primaries? No. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a loaded question, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Um, you should be able to paint a lot from your three primaries. Um, you should be able to mix a fairly wide range. And you should be able to mix a lot of hues. Those are things that kind of feel like yellow ochre or feel like burnt ochre or feel like phthalo blue. Um, they don't make phthalo blue for you because they are trying to help you uh, skip making phthalo blue. They make phthalo blue because cayenne and magenta and primary yellow aren't really going to get you to phthalo blue. Um, but within color theory, what you've got to realize is that uh, there's historic triadic color palettes, like you know where you have your primaries and you can mix a bunch of stuff. There's modern ones; those are very bright, those are very saturated, and how artists play with cool values and warm values and how they play with light and dark can make it seem like three colors is an infinite myriad of colors. In fact, there was a winner of the National Portrait Gallery when you're in, I'll have to find it, where the guy used like a black, a weird alizarin crimson and like white and it looked like he had mixed all the skin tones. And I was like, that, that is a master. I get a little on the thing like, why people be calling themselves a master when they're not a master? Because a master should be able to whip that stuff out. No. And be like, oh, hey, yeah, I've got these two and a half colors, and I'm going to freak you out with what I can do with them. And then you're going to be like, sorry, to add, to add my this... soapbox. I'm going to get a little okay. of my uh, white onto my mix, my titanium white. And I'm going to come forward and start to highlight some of my mosses. And to, to, to add to that, one of the reasons why you can't necessarily use three paint colors to mix all the other ones is that unique there are unique properties to pigments mm -hmm. and some of them reflect more light versus are more matte versus are more transparent 
Yeah, and they have very subtleties to them, which is why paint manufacturers go to such ends to collect It's pigments. not easy, man. And pigments... Or why artists have literally risked their lives to find tight and blue again. Yeah, and pigments... Because they're like, there's no yeah. color like that a lot. There's, there's no... There's no zinc. I mean, not zinc. Uh, lead white. It's lead white is lead white. Other stuff does not look like lead white. And when you're next to a painting that has lead white, you're like, oh, this is why artists risk their life for this beauty. You're like, that's crazy what that's doing to my eye. And understanding the, the material science of your paint. Your I'm just letting them know that I'm adding a little yellow ochre and more titanium white to my mossy mox mossy mix. Absolutely, yeah. And... The Cinnamon in the Big Art Quest is, she really goes through an effort of explaining the pigments, how they work, what these codes are about. And that is, I mean, like, only reason why I'm, I'm drilling on this is I know that in chat you guys talk about this and ask these questions. So, oh, yeah. And, and, and I'll tell you what, if I could get away with just three colors and that's all I did, and I may someday do it. Actually, no, I'm not. I may someday. I am doing a series based on that. But it won't be like every painting and it won't be all paintings. It's just an understanding of how color and value will play together. Oh my goodness, do we love this? Now, they were asking, did you rehearse this painting? No. You and me, are, <laughs> we're on this journey together. Now, what I will say is um, she should rehearse. I we should, just don't have enough time. Have any time to rehearse a painting. That's crazy. Don't we're, talk crazy to me. We're just... You crazies. I'm going to stay in my... We've got three kids and... A show. We have a lot of projects and a lot of shows, and I like to make paintings with you. Like I was trying to convince John today, like how you could like do some watercolors with you guys on Facebook. Cause I just love doing watercolors, and I had a really cool idea. It's just it's fun to do, but if I rehearse them, who is time to make them? No, I'm just kidding. So for I really need to. What's it? Maybe what? I need to, and I just I'm just kidding myself that I think that I don't. I'm gonna put a little alizarin into my phthalo green, and it's gonna do a really cool thing here. It's gonna deepen. It's going to still feel like a green, but it's going to feel like a green that's in one of the deepest dark that you've ever been into. And I'm going to take this. This is a number eight's cat's tongue. And I haven't played with my cat's tongues in a while. I thought, oh, it's such a good painting to bring my cat's tongues back out for. I love them. These aren't actually historically accurate cat's tongues, but I don't care because there's no standard. <laughs> it's a better name than pointed filbert. <laughs> Who wants a pointed filbert? Of which we just don't have enough of in the brush market as it is. So that's what I got going. Why am I starting all this stuff? So right now I'm just trying to make sure that these deep values, which is the alizarin and the green, super powerful combo here. Yep, super powerful combo. And I'm just making sure this is like a chromatic black. Let's be like right here and like, look how I'm going to just wiggle this up. And it's going to create like the tops of the bush. Just a job. And that value is so spectacular now, isn't it? Spectacular value. Oh, I love this painting. Boom, 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 boom. Get a little of our uh, uh, white into that. And I'll come here and I'll maybe say that there's a bit of a something that's a foot here. Maybe another little something that's a foot here. Light and pulled out and there it is. It doesn't need a lot more talk about. And every time I pull those micro values up, it's just going to really help create different little zones. Because Remember, we're making an illusion. This is not actually three-dimensional. Got this big beautiful one to do here. Also there's some of this in, in this base as well. I'm going to put some of this through here. I know I'm going to come back with the bright green. But having this worked in. See how softly and beautifully this works in? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. Other place that this color is going to be really spectacular is I'm going to get it worked through, worked through, worked through. Let's put some of this into it to our ground out here. You can even, and we'll come back with some of this, something like it and talk about some trees, but we're just starting to discuss lights and dark. 
dab of lighting. I'm going to be right here, kind of working with little touches on this soft brush pressure. Look, I'm just dusting the canvas with color here as I talk about that space. How are we doing? Pretty good. Okay. I'm going to get a lot of my yellow into my brush. A lot of my yellow into my brush. Maybe a smidge of my green into my yellow. Just such a bright color right here. You can even get a little of your Indian yellow to. Let's use this to just. Create this next sort of space of plant. So now the distant sponging, right, is going to be back there in this bright space. See the bright space that's pulling forward, forward, forward? Mm hmm. It's happening, isn't it? It's happening. It's happening. We're doing it. Pull that forward. Some of it here and there. It doesn't have to be everything. You don't want to make it everything. Play those edges against each other will definitely make you happy. Er, happier. Mm. May not solve everything in life, but it's a pretty decent thing. I'm going to get back into my angle brush, and I've got this beautiful grade tree, so I'm going to pull out some of my burnt umber and even some of my sienna here. Some wonderful color browns together. Let's work them through. I'm going to get some of my phthalo blue into this next. What a great tree color. And it's more saturated. So let's talk about this bad boy. Coming Oops. back here. Fairly big. I got distracted greeting a new person. Did we greet somebody new? Lisa was just joining us for the first time. Hi, Lisa. Welcome to the beginning of your art journey. So I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to start to fill in this little space. This guy covers up everything, so let's have a blast with it. And as I'm stroking down, I'm going to actually pull the stroke almost at a twisting angle. This is interesting because these trees, their bark gets a directionality going to it. And you can play with that as you layer up. Now, he's got a friend in front of him, so I'm going to go ahead and take it all the way back, but only because I have somebody coming in front. And I'm going to just pull this back, get a little of our black, also some blue. Let's come on this back side here. This is going to be coming down. Just pulling that in here. And we'll just keep going up with that. I feel like I need another cup of coffee, and then I can finish up this bad boy. Mm. That's what I need. What do you guys need for the rest of your painting? What do we need for the rest of our painting? We need more Sherpa. More Sherpa. So no. what we I just want to just point this out and let you be mindful of this. We have this dark shape. What we're doing is we're blocking in the overall shape. Now, obviously, the tree back here isn't quite this thick, and it has a friend that's right here. But by putting this in now, it it lets me start to talk about this tree before the friend is even in. I'm just taking my burnt ember, and I'm just brushing this down into my bark, layering up those, those bits of space that you might have. Now, you can come and you can get your white. I'm going to get my white. It's got my yellow in it. And I can come along here and say, all right, this guy's here, but in front of him, about here in the painting, here's the corner. A little block in this fellow. He's coming up. And he comes up here. And he's going to have the biggest branch that goes over, and then this guy has the second biggest branch that goes over. And so we've got a lot, a lot happen, don't we? So I'm going to get a little of my block on here. And we've kind of already started some of this, but we can come right there. 
at us go. Look at us be awesome. Be awesome. Just put that right there. How's that? Painting that in. We're so brave. I bet yeah. you feel very brave right now. I feel totally brave sitting here at this computer behind the cameras, not being out there in front of them. I'm going to add a little burnt sienna. Some because there is more red in this forward-facing tree, but some also because it's going to really help me see it um, across here. Now, the thing to realize about this is it comes up right in this space. Ooh. Now, I know you don't have a chance to see chat here, Cinema, but I'm going to say you're going to have to come back and read it later. Oh, do I? There's a lot of folks that are that are sharing how they started painting with you some number of years ago, and now how how far along their journey they are, how and they're welcoming other members and expressing just how much fun they've had along this and being here with you. And I have to say thank you, guys. Um, the kind words that you're sharing, uh, really, really appreciate it. Um, and thank you. We've got, we've got a wonderful group of people here with us, as always. So, thank you, guys. And actually, in all seriousness, I was, I was actually just um, doing an interview that I cannot tell you guys about yet. And um, that I'll tell you as soon as I can tell you. And um, we were discussing this process and what I do. And just recently, I realized that I've been on a journey as you've been on a journey. I think one of the reasons I feel so connected to my community online is that this dialogue that we're able to have, not just in the lives, but in all the spaces where we talk, you know, because we use social media to communicate, the polls, the stories, the messages, like all of that stuff, that's really actually been this two-way street and that I've been on this journey as a teacher in this space as much as you guys have been on a journey um, as students in this space like what does this mean and what is this for art and what are we doing and how are we relaying information and what's important to people and the type of work and I you know I got asked this like fabulous question about like what I do for me and I just thought I do this for me this is literally like this is a satisfying painting to do I'm happy doing this painting but I not only get to do this painting, are you, are you teasing me with my coffee? Oh, that's how you get this first care. Oh, can I get, can I get fresh, oh, fresh water? It's a good time to change your water if you haven't. This is a very muddy painting if they look like mine. Mine look like uh, swamp water. They look like water from the bayou is what they look like. I do, I do, it's weird. I'm not from the South, but I live here so many decades. I do have a bit of a Southern accent that can overcome me. It's like, it's like being, being possessed by the spirit of the South, and it mostly happens when I'm super upset, and it's so weird when I catch it, because I think, wow, I've like lived a lot of places, and so I imagine a language specialist would look at me and be like, well, if you listen to her dudes and, and all the weird little speech inflections I have, you could probably track where I've been, but it's real funny. <coughs> when I used to actually, without irony, say, I'm going to jerk a knot in your tail. I don't anymore. Well, that's such a crazy thing for me to say. I'm not from here. You know, but there's this weird little thing. And these sort of paths and this, this side of the world, it, it gets to you. Isn't it amazing to see where we live? I love my photo resource places because I love seeing around the world and the difference between the trees and the landscape. I really hope to, to begin a traveling cycle of my life where I come and meet you guys face to face and paint with you and create with you. And I want to do that, not just, I'm, you know, I'm probably going to have to start out in the United States here, but then I'd like to get into, like, all of North America and then down into South America and then globally. I'd like to, I'd like to meet my friends in India and meet my friends in Australia and meet my friends in the UK and meet my friends in, you know, like, we have a bunch of friends in Romania. I've never been to Romania. I bet it's gorgeous there. I bet painting and painting is just the bomb. I don't know. But I'd like to go. I'd like to travel, uh, you know, as much as we can, given the climate of the world. You know what? You will need to stop making it all crazy for the rest of us, because I'd like to travel. Wouldn't you like to travel? Yeah. 
Yeah, I just I just wish everybody just calm down and be like, okay, we good, we good. Let's just work on infrastructure and let's just travel. Hug huh. hug people we don't know. But I'm not in charge of anything, so that feeling doesn't really help anybody. So we'll just paint our way around we'll the world. We'll just paint our way around. But I'd like to. I'd like to get to meet everybody. I think I got paint all over down the front of my shirt. That's okay. Um, you paint yourself. I did. I paint myself. I paint myself. I wanted to paint me. That's not okay. I'm going to stop that right now. I'm gonna this take is a, a little family of my friendly show, Sherpa. Blue. And put it into my paint goes on the canvas. Bert Sienna. Okay, I'm gonna do that now. And this this bit right here, this is quite thick. It is literally almost the 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 width of this five quarter this five eighths brush. You know, it's a very thick branch. You just can't believe how thick these oak branches can get. You know, if you like to paint little fairy, fairy little fiddly bits, like if you paint with me for a while, you know I'm inclined to. Almost put my brush. Ah! Hi! It, it leaped. Scared me. I'm obviously easily scared. You're like, how would you ever watch The Walking Dead? Not well. I'll tell you that right now. I gave up. <laughs> I'm just like, wait, there's no cure. It's never gonna get better. We're just gonna be here. I mean, even Umbrella Corporation, there's hope. We had Alice. <laughs> What on earth? <laughs> what is with this? Un unfortunately, universe? Alice didn't have Alice though. There... Alice had a lot of Alice, sweetheart, but you can't do a spoiler in case someone's never seen it. That's true. You can't go into anything about Alice without spoiling the whole series. It's true. I would just. I'm refrain. just saying. Play the in game. Umbrella Corporation, you have Alice. In Walking Dead, you have Daryl. But you know, I, I feel kind of bad for everything he's got to go through. I just think to the time in my life when I was like so into my zombie movies, but now I can't watch them at all. Children. Can't. So sad. I'm so sad. Honestly, at this point, a howler can scare me. <laughs> so you're watching Harry Potter, and I'm like, uh, expecto patronum, expecto patronum. Things are everywhere. So you know. I've just grabbed a little blue and went. I'm just trying to create some different zones for my trees to exist. Yeah, we've got now we've got a couple trees here. Get a couple little trees here. Let's bring a little white right here. Make sure that this tree initially is in its own space in front of its friend. You can see how it's starting to layer out. So we've got a nice full oak alley. Not really that overwhelming and challenging. It's just there's some stuff happening here. We have to be present. We have to pay attention. You know, I got to fill some of this in with some more. Um, I'm going to get a little of my blue and my brown and my black. Like you do. And just make sure that I've, I'm filling in some of this space in a way that you might want to so that it feels... I gotta really kind of break that in. That's gonna be like a lot of moss and green there. So that that's happening. Just still talking about those spaces. But to give myself a reward for my hard, hard work up here, back into my number eight cat's tongue I go. And I'm gonna get uh, my brush a little bit loaded with the green. I'll get some of my yellow ochre in there. And let's tap this here. It makes kind of a nice little bit of bush. A little bit right here. So we're tapping and wiggling and tapping. Pushing it up. Bush it up. But we're gonna bush it up. Bush it up. Little yellow ochre coming out, coming out. Unexpected, but I'll work it out. a little bit of that and maybe to create this space of a bush you can always get right back into your black if you're trying to talk about like the shadow that's right here and 
Now, if I get the burnt sienna into this mix, right, like so I've got this right here, and you even get your yellow ochre, you can start getting some of these crazy ground colors. You can start coming back and forth. Knowing some of that, but going on. Work that in, work that in. There's some that are peaked out here. Okay. Make sure that I'm seeing everything as I wish to see it clearly. Let me pull some of this light down. I think it's enjoyable working this blazing medium through here so that I can keep going. But just start to talk about piece of this. Coming up this oak alley. I love the dappled light. I love how much you guys like the dappled light already. Let's get some of our cad yellow in here. Mixed into that. It's got a green cast to it. I'm gonna get a little white in it. And I feel like that's too green, so I'm going to add my Indian yellow. You see how I'm doing the adding the Indian yellow? Let's see how that's doing. Ah, nice. Dappling that little light. Just on the tip of the brush and just letting it be sort of rough and spots, right? We're just letting it be spots. Look at these little spots. You can see how when I drag my brush aside and I keep the pressure light and the bristles sort of flail out, I can create little little dapples fairly easily happening on the floor of this oak alley. And you can come in and you can load up a bunch. Ooh, that's skin. Look how bad that's skin. Load up a bunch of your burnt umber into your brush like you do. I might get a little bit of my thalo blue into this. And you're going to see it's going to make an interesting gray. I'm going to get my glaze into it. And make sure that I have spaces that are sort of glazed out with this cool color. See how that's a nice cool color? I'm weaving those through. Weaving those shadows through. Weave a little shadow through. And because the glaze, it can transparently lay over other spots and it starts to create a sort of blending of light, softening of light. I'm going to just bring little bits of my ground through here. I'm just letting my ground happen as if it might have happened maybe in in nature a little bit, right? And the other color I'm going to get in there is I'm going to get some of my burnt sienna and I'll just work it through. And you can tap that out there in the little leaves that could have fallen. Look at those little, little bits of... So we're keeping it dark, but we're creating this... And see, I'm not making like dash, dash, dash. I'm being so random. Look how random we're being. Just back and forth. Working the brush like this, enjoying this space. Oh, look at that. So pretty. Pretty guys. I'm liking it. Aren't you liking it? Now, for the purposes of the tiny little flowers on these bushes, I'm going to get my magenta all uh, through there and a little of my lizard crimson into it. And I may even grab hmm, a smidge of my ultramarine blue. Can you see what that did there? How it pulled it, but kept it very deep. Let's paint some of these little flowers. And it's okay to have some of these little dashes of color go See how some of these went up into the air? It almost appears as if they're floating on a cloud. A little cluster that's quite heavy. 
another little cluster that is quite heavy. Put that on board. And then I can get a little bit of my zinc white into this. And you can just tap the top of some of this. Look at that. Tap the top. Not all of it, because it's still about catching the highlights, the, the tops of the flowers. Oh, still push back? That's lovely. As I'm coming forward, I can take a smidge of my cad yellow into this mix. And it warms it the smallest amount. But that's going to let me make this next little area just a bit warmer. All of the stuff behind it. I'm making it feel as if it's, it's gone more forward than, say, perhaps other bits. You can come through here to this particular space this particular bush a bit in all not all of it like I might hit a bit heavy right here where I know I'm gonna have a lot of flowers work this really in so many flowers right here so I can create some warmth there Just a little bit right here Some magenta on there, some clean white. Just working that into that. Make sure that none of this some sunlight on it. See how that looks on top. A little bit of that. Little bit more magenta. Pay attention to the clusters, and what you have, and you still have, you know, an area above this white to talk about, plus little weird tucks of this color, you know, that are happening. Like there's a weird little tuck of Oops. pink. Sorry, but like right here, there's this weird little tuck of pink. There you go. Get a little lizard in there. Push that weird little tuck up back. We don't know why it's there. It's there though. So many. It's happening there. So we've got a little bit there. Lots to work in that space. I want to take a little of my glazing medium, work it into my phthalo green, get a little of my burnt. It's not as bright as it could be, but I'm going to definitely add a little more green here and there in this space. I'm pulling it forward. And I can even get a little bit of my yellow ochre. Talk about a couple spots here and there. These are leaves. Have a little light on them, but they don't have like the bright light on them, and they're a little dusty. They're a little gray. Probably they're a hardier plant. And work this one out. Still not done. Still working the color, but I can take my acridone and my cad red and I can work them together. Make this amazing color. Get that right in there. And all of this is in that hot awesomeness. I'm just tapping out this little shape. Look how I'm just bringing it down and tapping it up and Leaving open spaces. These are open spaces.
So if you're a fan of azaleas or rhododendrons or any of those flowers, this is a great way to get them in and to paint them. Pay attention to the warmth of the bloom. There are areas where it'll feel like, you know, colors are, are more solid than others. You can always get a lizard in there to cool it down if you're saying, oh, deeper in the plant, it's not as bright as it is up in the sunlight. You can do that. Nothing's stopping you. This one is quite a strong, a lot of color on my painting. I love how that's really showing. We'll put out a little more of Maquinacra dough, magenta, it's black one, colors, ever, it really is, ever. So these are just a little more purple. So if I get a little of the ultramarine into my brush and I get into my quinacridone, it's going to purple them just slightly. And get them into that magenta that we're seeing here. So I'm going to go ahead and add more of this right here into everything. I'm done. Weaving that in. Giving it more green there. Kind of like bring it out. Now, work, work, work it through. Get a bunch. I'm just trying to make quite a light value. And you're just having some of that light value. Beauty right now. Reminds me a little of the boat we did, the little flowers over the boat. That actually, that painting and this painting probably go really well together. Oh, yeah. We're doing on that. Let's see. Now, Do you have uh, some light? Is, are you, what? Krista was asking, are you Hi, using Krista. golden zinc white? Okay, so the zinc white is actually Holbein today. So out today in a mix mash of many different paints is the Artist Loft Level 3, because I'm committed to testing all 36 colors. <laughs> um, I'd like to test every one of Holbein's colors and every one of Golden's colors. Yeah, I ran into some budget issues there. But yeah, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm into them. That way, if there's a find, like I found a paint I think is so cool. I almost put it in this painting, but I didn't want to put you under pressure. I think this red oxide in this particular one is just awesome stuff. It's like the coolest thing. This is like, this is the Southwest Desert color. I'm like, I just, I know in the Southwest Desert, I'm gonna have to give you guys, but I like to give you guys heads up if I'm gonna make out, run out and get a new tube of paint. Now, in all transparency, we, uh, this is a mix of some paint that was given to us and some paint that we bought mm -hmm. um, because we were given both some Holbein and Artistry level, yep. Artist Loft level I'm, three. I'm sure that, that, that I, Frankly, we've been given some gold, and I literally yeah. went into their booth and rated it. In Hampton, so <laughs> but we do get given, like on occasion. But, but we most, also are Texas Art Supply. We were just bought it. We buy a whole bunch of stuff. Too. We always try to let you know where's what. Yeah, and just to say, we bought most of what you see here. Because but not we, all. But yeah, not all. But, I'm not such a crazy artist. I won't no. take like some free paint. Yeah, we'll totally take free paint if you guys want to send it. But Go ahead. don't, don't, not if you got, don't send me terrible paint don't, because no. I won't review it and then you're going to be mad at me and Sorry. I can't do that. I can not only, starting anything. only talk about stuff that I think people should buy and it's just not something I can do. I, and no shade to any artist who's making their money this way. I know it's something being shady. It's just not right for me. It's just, we, just, yeah. It, it, that's all it is. It's not right for me, but I want every artist to make money. So if, and, you know, you're taking money to review paint and it's not your favorite you're not a bad person now i'm not saying that don't write me a big angry letter for you at home <laughs> using don't paint do it, please i'm so use sorry. whatever paint you want yeah they're all yeah. good i'm for... just talking about live studio okay. i'm they're grabbing a little good. more pink they're... here because i want to brighten this up all paint is paint. of equal emotional satisfaction to putting on a surface and making marks you know, Unless it aggravates you. And, that, you know, and hey, a very good paint could aggravate you. It could. Yeah. So it they all have the same potential. <laughs> to We're be good so, or bad in your life. 
Do you feel like I've gotten a nice little, I think I've got a nice little pink puff there happening. I feel good about. I'm going to rinse out. I'm going to do a neat thing. We're going to play with some greens to really bring that out. But before I can play with some greens, I'm going to grab my Pure Cad Red. Just to be cheeky. And tap some of this around this one. And it's going to create such a uh, stir. Not, not like on YouTube. Nobody cares what I'm painting on YouTube. But, um, well, you never know nowadays because it seems like YouTube cares about a lot of stuff. And nobody cares. I'm like, okay, if you care about that, then we're going to do that. All right, how's that pop look? That's a nice. Didn't that just go boom? Boom. Now, I'm going to put out some more of my green, which is, again, the Holbein Thalo green. I'm going to load that up on my, my little brush here. I'm going to get maybe some in my yellow ochre. because That's a nice way to lighten it without really brightening it. And I'm going to make sure that there's a little bit of that sort of happening here. And... Some, you know, you want some little bits of green afoot here. There's a really wonderful little bit of grass over here. Let's talk about. Again, just a couple places out here. And how I'm doing that is I'm just going back and forth. And then I just do these sort of the direction, the feeling of the grass strokes so that I can talk about them without specifically, you know, specifically painting. I'm going to get some had yellow into this mix. I haven't rinsed it, but I've gotten it in there and I can add some of that to the to that story. Look at that. Popping out a little grass story. Grass story. What is that? It's grass story. Let's work some more yellow into there. Put some of this yellow into this bush here. A little bit. Not everywhere. Some biter green that is on this forward face. Mm, there is a bit of an azalea that's down here. Maybe more than I needed. I'm going to get a little of my ultramarine and my black. I don't know that I went out of too much. Let's bring that up here. Let's start painting this beautifulness. Let's start painting that beautifulness. So, a little of my. What? Wow, goodness, I need more burn umber, don't I? I do not know. It got all skinned. I'm going through my paint today. Mm. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm cool with this palette. Yeah. I've actually enjoyed, so far, I've enjoyed the wood uh, element of it, and it's actually been easier for my eye to find value on this than the gray. Mm, that's Just interesting. Today. I ha you know, I have to see it over several, several days, but that's how I'm feeling. And these I did run into Texas Art Supply, and I did grab. I've got this nice color, and I'm going to come here and start talking about Come here, little oh. tree. Let's talk about you. I was wondering, Cinnamon. Yes. Turn, let me see something. Turn around, look at me. Huh. Oh, your mic is hanging funny. Oh, okay. Can we fix it? It How can, How long totally. has it been hanging funny? Oh, just now. Okay. Uh, perfect. There you go. That's it. Just now? Yeah. I always feel so bad when there's a bad sound. No, no. It's I've been listening. So. All right. I'm going to get a little zinc on here, and we're going to come just... It's lighter, but it's not completely lighter. We're going to just start talking about some of this trunk, and we'll just stroke. See, I'm just taking this little cat's time and just pulling that down a little bit. There we go. How's that feeling? Like Sherpaception. Like serp Sherpaception? Because I had picture of you and picture of you. Let's... Start talking about maybe some of this branch that's happening here. And it's very branchy. Very branchy. Oh, I might have yellow ochre too. Let's see. Let's go. 
got to play with these values. Play with your values, my friend. We're almost done. We're not that far into the, we're not that far from done. Right? And remember, your speed does not need to be my speed. That is, these things are not necessarily related to each other. Anyway, I'm going to get quite a light color because I've got to make this guy sort of stand out from his little friend that he's next to. I'm going to come back to that tree and sort of lighten it up a bit. Working this through. Let's come here and add some of those highlights into that tree branch there. I think we had them sort of throughout it. Now what's wonderful is this little fellow here, he actually gets thicker and there's a second little branch that comes off. So hopefully I'll be able to get that kind of like worked out between these two. There we go. It's interesting weaving these all amongst each other. thicker 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 I'm just thickening this up and starting to talk about this little space and these branches as they come forward we get the privilege of maybe looking at them a little closely and talking about more of what's happening on them maybe not so closely that we're seeing the bugs crawling on them but we should see the things that are growing from them and all the ways that they are happening now we know that we love the black and the white and the yellow for our moss. It's been a fairly good moss. You can even use some of the titanium white. And so over here, we'll just keep playing with this idea, this notion of the moss falling down. Through here quite heavily. I also think while I'm here and I've got some moss, let's put some moss a little bit in this forward facing bush, just a small amount. You guys have a little moss, little Spanish moss that has infiltrated your sweet little bush up front, hopefully. A little of the Indian yellow and the white, quite a nice little highlight. Just pulling this down. That's lovely. Just pulling it down. See how we like that? Oh, that's nice and drippy there. It's so interesting to do this because it's like such a big invasion of your painting. I'm going to get my phthalo blue all worked through my brush and I'm going to get some of my burnt umber. And I'm going to play with my titanium, not my titanium, my zinc white to get some of these blued bark feelings that are happening right here. See how this bark is sort of blued? I'm going to just keep. into this and then up in here too so pulling this back and pulling back that value okay for me to come into here and say all right maybe a little patch of sunlight caught you there a little bit could have caught it right there a few little highlights You know, we can always come back in and with our black and our blue really get into the shape and the shadow of things. Play with those, the way those trees are playing with each other. Yellow, yellow, yellow. I'm 
I'm going to just pull this in here. And I'm also going to pull some of this through this top thing because I want to play with the... This has a different sort of... As this branch pulls apart from its sister branch and goes out there. And I'm going to get some of my burnt sienna. Even work that into the wood here. I'm working that in. And these are almost merged from each other. Are you doing okay, babe? Yeah. Okay. I know it's a lot going on on the branch. You're like, oh, it's a lot in the branch. It is a lot in the branch. This, it's an oak alley. <laughs> it's an oak alley. Now, the community was asking out here, hmm. on our difficulty scale, we, we try to rate them all to one to three I think this is a three. This is definitely, a th you think, a three? I think this is a three. I think a confident two hoop painter could very slowly progress through it if it was important to them to do, like super, super important. And and they were willing to like deal with any frustration that they might possibly have. I'm going to get my lizard into this again. Now, if you click on the link in the description down below, yeah. you'll you'll find, whoop, where is it? I'm going to green up the Somewhere. top of this There branch. it is. Quite that... a lot. Let's green this up quite a lot. On their website, you can find that we've got a little difficulty meter there, like the one you see up on the screen, and it'll allow you to, to vote yourself. Yeah, and I highly recommend that you do. And it also helps people coming along behind you to know how, how hard it was for you. I'm adding a little bit of my brown and my green. I'm going to just come to the top of this branch all the way across. Adding a little bit of green value to that first. So these are like... Not one is not really particularly lighter or darker than the other. They're the same value until I improve the value. That's the that's the contrast between this color and this color. Um, it won't it won't really pop yet. It's really got to have that to pop. Yep. So I'm gonna keep adding my yellow to this because I've got these lovely bits of green. Get smidge of my lizard in here to gray it. I'm going to be very careful with this because I want this to be bright. This is a really crazy awesome painting. It is. And it's fun to do. And they're like, we're, I mean, like, it's going to be probably what, just over two hours because we're like, two, uh, uh, we're just pulling up on two hours now. Yeah, I think it's going to be about 220. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought. Not 220, which isn't bad for the type of painting that it is. No, not at all. Actually, I weirdly think tomorrow is going to be the easier painting. I initially thought it was going to be the harder painting, but I think that tomorrow is going to be the easier painting. Now, Victoria was asking, does the, uh, let me see if I can get it to pull back up here. Where is, not that one, this one, there we go. It, does the difficulty meter change based on voting? Yes. And it absolutely does. So Cinnamon, she puts her Sherpa rating in the top there. And then you guys can vote there at the bottom on a star rating 1 to 5. And uh, it automatically will comp, it'll do the calculation for you guys. So it, uh, it allows for you to vote between 1 and 3. To, uh, so if it's 1 and a half, 2, 2 and a half, 3, it, it gives you some, some room to kind of interpret that. So thank you for playing with us. I'm just tapping my little brush down, creating these little uneven little marks. Clearly, I'm excited about that little bit of tech. I'm excited about that little bit of tech. Even though it's like people arguing with me, I think it's okay. It's fun. <laughs> Even though it's you guys fully arguing with me, I think it is okay. Isn't, it's a debate. It's a it's, debate. It's a debate about difficulty. About difficulty. I mean, we're not going to get bent out of gnome over it. I'm going to put out a little of my my cad worked into this green. There I'm working my cad into the green. Yep. Huh. Oh, I see what happened. Okay. So, everyone kept telling me in chat that the reference photo on the website is on backwards. And I was like, huh, what's going on with that? So I went over there and looked, and I was like, sure. Did I send you the wrong reference photo? No, I think that in the 
one of the thumbnails that you originally made, it was flipped. <laughs> yeah, I think so. It was the wrong one. I wanted this one with the better lighting. Yeah, and so I think that what happened is is that there's an old thumbnail that's still on the reference photo on the website. So we'll we'll get that swapped out. So what happened is like I started planning out my content way way ahead. And I would want to talk about certain things and just have fun and be able to do that. And if you're seeing everyone start planning it out ahead, you can say thank you. <laughs> Because it's really good. If we can plan these things out ahead a little bit, then you guys can plan out your lives out ahead a little bit. But when I found this, I think I found the one, and then I realized it wasn't my favorite of that. Mm. This is just that mix of cad red and, and I'm just kind of trying to put in this brown, but this really uh, str strongly visual brown into this mix of color here. I'll go ahead and. Some yellow into this too. There we go. Let me work that through. Oh, that's nice. I'm just playing with that. Maybe a little bit of that right there. How is that looking on our little distant tree? Now. No, now. Now. I'm no, now. A smidge of my phthalo green. Not then, now. And you can see it's almost like a mint, right? Mm -hmm. a smidge of my phthalo blue. It's going to make this sort of crazy aqua color. There we go. See if I can get some of this to pop. I don't have to catch all of it. You just want to get some of it. How's that popping? Almost popping. Get our yellow into it. Get some of our white. You see, I'm just working through all these values of green. For me, it's like a super fun to work through all these values of the green. There we go. That's a nice top of that top of the moss for you. Nice top of the moss in the sunlight for you. Yeah. Just a little bit of it could be popped here. All of it. Just some of the moss. Top of the moss. Top of the moss. Work it through, work it through, work it through. Grab some of that phthalo green. So intense, right? These two are so intense together. I haven't rinsed out my brush. And that's a little trick because what that's going to do is that's going to let me continually micromanage different little half shades into that space. Let's see how that's looking from a distance. I feel like it looks like we've got some sunlight happening there. We've got some Spanish moss. We've got some sunlight. We're going to get a little of our magenta and um, alizarin together. They're going to pop right here. Look at that. Now we've got this little bit of bush. You get any of the zinc into it at all. I'm just making sure that some of these flowers have a little bit of sunlight on them. That's all we're doing. Last tree in the forefront of everything that's happening here, which is really rather cool. So this branch is just, he's a Awesome sauce, isn't he? Yeah. So I'm going to get a little bit of my cad into my burnt sienna. And even a little of my yellow ochre to that. I'm going to start making these sort of little mixes. And I'm going to 
top little. I'm gonna really enjoy this. This this tree trunk. Let's have a second whip. Let's. We're already over two. Let's take a minute and really rock this little fellow. So he's pulled forward. So he's in focus. See, I'm making these little, very considered, bark mark. If you've ever done my BAQ about bark, you kind of know the direction that I'm going. So what is the BAQ? The big art quest is something I started in 2016 just to help make art be easier when you're new. So you're when you're in the art store, it's not such a misery. Did it work? It worked so well that now we're at BAQ 2018 and we're doing this crazy fairy tale series that I've got to finish. And you got some ideas for 2019 that's going to even yeah. get cooler. It's going to make it even easier. And, and so that so usually what happens is like if I get sick or anything happens, I can fall a little bit behind and then we spend a little bit of catch up. But John's figured out how to prevent that for 2019. And we're going to start implementing some of that in 2018. And, I, and, and actually that goes into a larger plan to have more games, interactivity, you know, and just fun with our community. Add a little bit of this color back there. Lots of new things happen. Get a little of my brown here and pull that in. I love the the color fun of all of this to me is just I just grab some of my burnt umber. What I'm doing is I'm just Starting to imply the texture and layer up these different colors. It's going to get deeper. It's going to get intense, but I wanted to be able to pop these. Even as it's peeking out through everything. And now I'm really paying attention to the directionality of the bark. You're going to notice that. Now as I'm going, work everything through here. Everything through. I'm going to get a little bit of my thalo blue. And these together, they're going to gray out. See how they are? Then I'm going to be able to really come into this tree and go like this. Whatever we're not seeing above this is casting shadow. And we're going to do this really cool like little layering of Spanish moss to talk about the things above this space. Let's, let's really get into this. Just pulling this in. I feel like this is just one of my favorite little things. Doing pepper trees in California. Pepper trees are so pretty to paint. I always admired any artist that could pull off a pepper tree. Rainbow eucalyptus. There's certain trees. Uh, Christmas tree in uh, New Zealand. Now, I'm going to give a big hug to all the Sherpets out there who are watching their phone under the, under the covers in bed at 1 a.m. because you're sneaking up late watching Sherpa. <laughs> and art high fives to you. Our high fives to you too, but be sure you rest. Self care. <laughs> well, you know they're around the world. We're live now. They're in India, so. Oh, I love my Indian art family. I have to say, you guys have been amazing. I love how I know that there's some differences in trying to get supplies and materials, and the questions are challenging. Remember, Windsor new is Thalo blue. <laughs> <laughs> There's some stuff, and you guys have been amazing, and I'm just so glad that we can share this journey together, even though we're separated by distance. I'm adding a little bit of my burnt sienna to this and grabbing some of my zinc white, some of my zincs. Look at us go, getting these next little layers of something afoot. And I'm just doing these little marks to talk about this little space of bark. Just back and forth. A little bit lighter down here because it gets darker down there. I mean, darker down here. Now, you can always get back into that space if you've got something you've got to darken up and play with. Feel like you've got some freedom here. And come Highlight the front of that little knot. And 
and then back up this little trunk. A little highlight here. <coughs> All right, so let's see where we're at. We have a little more trunk action to do. Yes. Let's a little of the titanium white into our brush. Maybe a smidge more of the blue. See, talk about these little bits of bark right here. Kind of like a moss and bark and all the things are happening there. And then through here, there's some of this interesting stuff with the foot. There we go. Talking about that a bit. Just being rough with the brush some. A little bit of a highlight right here, which we're going to come and really talk about more deeply. I'm going to load up some white onto my brush. And I'm going to get a little of my yellow ochre into that. Work it through. And the reason I work it through is once it's worked through, I can I can get a fairly accurate um, value sense. And so right here, I'm going to just bury, you can just see it's just super light. I'm going to make a little highlight space right there. A friend. If you need to get your glazing medium into it, you can. Pulling that there, top of that maybe. We're just catching this light that's happening, you know, on this tree a couple places. Working that front edge of light. I'm going to get a little of my minion yellow into my brush, back and forth. So it's light, which you can totally see it is light, because it's a different quality of light. So we're going to just come in here and I'm going to blend this light into it, dappling it up. They were coming back and dappling. I see you dappled. I dappled something. Maybe a little bit of this little kiss right here. I like this color right here. Showing some little bit. All right, let's step back and see where we also need little dapples. I like that. Little dapples. Little dapples. Well, there's little dapples like. What about the big dapples? There's little bits here. Because this. This tree branch is so big, it actually is impacted by the dapple bite. Uh. It's got enough surface. We've got to consider what's happening for it. And how we're playing with it. Now, I'm going to come back. I'm going to load up with my black. Get the blue black like loaded through there. And I'm going to get some of my thalo blue into that. Cools it. It's such a deep dark shadow. Just make sure we've got a nice one of those in our little tree hole. There we go, tree hole. And just have some of this dark value here. Not everywhere, just through some stuff. A little bit here and there. Because there's some deep bark in there, you'll see some dark shadows throughout the whole tree.
Now this is really interesting. I'm gonna go like this and I'm gonna get some just glaze. Yeah, I'm gonna glaze a little bit there. Another way to blend the things that you have going on. So glaze. So now we're dappling some shadows. Look at that. Considered more shadow here. You can look at the shape of the shadow and like talk about it a bit. The shadow dapple. The shadow dapple. And what is this under here? It's an environmental shadow. In other words, it shows us where the rain and some of the nutrients aren't getting and where people are walking. Those can be as important as those ones that we break in the light when we talk about what isn't growing there or how that's happening. You see, I'm glazing some of that out into a deeper value. How good? Well, that's just starting to be a thing, isn't it? Let's grab a little of our phthalo blue and our phthalo green together. Some of them I'm going to put in with some alizarin. Let's plant some of this fabulous moss. Drawing, like making a little journey here. <coughs> there's a bunch of it everywhere, but there's some spots that are very special. Lots that are very special. See, I'm just using the tip of the brush to just talk about the top of all of this. Okay, if some of it is like up high. So along the top, you've got this sort of green. Right? Some moss. The moss is all there. Definitely is right here. Coming back. And when I'm coming along, I can get, again, my blue and my green together. It can be nice to grab my Indian yellow. Start talking about some zinc. There we go. Just a little tap. Just tap this. I mean, just tapping that little color out. I'm just tapping the brush down. You can kind of see it right there. Tapping it out. Oh, is that pulling on our space? Tapping on our space. Here we go, just going, going, going. Uh, like very softly with my brush. You can see I'm just like letting it be a little green here, a little green there. You know, you can slow down, you can paint every individual leaf. That's a thing that you can do. Absolutely. But then what? You, you know, then you're painting every individual leaf. Or you can just paint those spaces that are speaking to you. A little bit of the cad yellow. You can see how the cad yellow pops in there. An everywhere color. Having some spaces for it. It's worthwhile. I'm 
And we're just talking about some of the stuff that's happening. Just going along. Isn't there that fun? Go. Yeah. That. Now we've got that front branch. I've got my blue here and my black and my brown, this brown, any brown, making that gray, making that gray. Just coming around this little knot a little bit, I think maybe a little more. Getting a little of that titanium white. All right, here we go. A little highlight there. We want to talk about our little knot in the tree and everything that's going on. A little bit of that dash around. Play with this. Look at the tree. Make it, make it rough. Make it, you know, it's like a variable. Yeah, this, this, some of this gray is going forward through here, but not all of it. As it, as it goes out, it gets browner and more rust, doesn't it? Now the other thing is, I'm going to get into my yellow here, but I've got my brush quite full of color. Look at that. So it grays out real quick. Gray, 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 gray. <laughs> grays out real quick. All that green and blue. Graying it out real quick. There we go. Now we can start to from unknown sources, some of this moss from up top the canvas. Oh, your foreground moss. My foreground. Maybe a little bit of right there. It happens, doesn't it? It's, you can get a little more blue into it if you need to. And I'm using the ultramarine blue because it's, it's this it's not a bright color. I'm getting some, oops, not what I wanted to get, so offload, get my, trying to make some of it be quite dark. So what I may do is I may come in, if I can find it with my Mars Black, because I want some dark value moss that I can highlight. There we go. I don't want to take out everything up top. But it's here and it's happening and I need to talk about it a little bit. Pulling a little moss down right here. And I may exaggerate some of it. If that makes sense to show parts of it. Ah, oh, there we go. There's our shadow in the moss. Coming from up here. And we've got some of this nice moss happening in our tree. And once we have that, then you can come in with your zinc. You can show some of the highlights with some of the moss hanging down. How we're doing? How is our moss? Get that moss. Get that moss. All right, so our trees have this moss that's hanging down, but we still have little pops of light. Now I'm going to get some of my Indian yellow and some of my zinc white. Is that my zinc or my titanium? I think. Someone didn't remember. <laughs> I'm going to make a very warm light. I think this is titanium. It doesn't seem very transparent. You can do that finger trick. Yep. Titanium. Here's what I'm going to do. I need to put out some pops of light. I do want to use my titanium because, you know, we're catching some bright lights into the, into the space. I'm going to use a little of my burnt sienna and a little of my yellow ochre to create it. And then um, once I get those pops in, I get to sign this thing and say, wow, we painted this crazy tree tunnel. That's not much left. Mm -mm. 
not much at all. So work in that yellow, red and get your yellow because together they make kind of this like forest orange, don't they? You can even be so cheeky as to put in a little pad to really capture it. I'm just coming along here and I'm popping little bits of a bright light. Just, I'm still on this four cats time. How are you guys doing? Are you okay? Yeah, everybody out here is really enjoying this. This has been really great. And I have to say the overwhelming response has been people have been shocked that you just did this like without any rehearsal and cold. This has turned out really, really nice. And yeah, all the little devils of color. Do. It's so pretty. Not only is this not rehearsed, this is something that I don't typically paint. No. So this was really fun for me as well. And that's, you know, you know, be brave. Take on stuff that you don't normally typically do. You can do that. So. All right. So I'm going to get my little brush. I'm going to make a little signature. Somewhere I want to find a little crazy color that I feel is going to show but be interesting sure is color hunting well, you want to sign it so that it shows but you don't want to take over the whole painting with your signature actually i didn't like how that signed so watch this we have got clean enough water to do this <gasps> forgery hmm well, the wonderful thing about everything I do is if anyone cares in, a, in time, there's a record somewhere of what I do. <laughs> we have some providence. We know this was yours. <laughs> we know it. We're aware. I think I'm going to get just the burnt numbers, but I think I want. They would like a tour of the painting before we go. Yes. So you tour gonna... the painting, and I can answer any final out questions. Oh, yeah, I like that much better. In there, visible, not a gash into the work. Wow. I'm going to take them through a little tour over here. Tour away. Of this. So let me get, let me get it ready here. I think what I'm going to do is I'll start. You zoom out a little bit. And if you step forward, what I'll do is mm -hmm. I'll start out zoom. Zoom out wide here. And you can see, I'm going to zoom in a little bit up here. And let you guys just start right about here. And take a little look down. What's really nice to look at is you know you can see down here how, the, how she dappled all the little, all those little layers there to make up the tree bark and those little mossy bits up here, all those little brush strokes. And then when you zoom out, they really come together. Pretty amazing. It is pretty cool. I want to show everybody something kind of boss, but I'm going to do it another day. All right. We don't tease them. You can't tease me. We're going to do something else. Another yeah, day. Right, can I do it? Well, you're just, I don't I'm know. I'm going to do it. Which, I don't even know what she's doing, guys. I, she's, she's gone, Sherpa. It's uh, just something that's bugging <laughs> me in the painting. And what are you doing over there? I'm looking for something. She's gone through her bin of paint. She has a little bin of paint. Oh, you guys can't see me. I'm going through the bin of paint. You can she's, you can see you've been, I'll, I'll put you up there so you can see you rummaging. Oh, it's a lot, right? What are you looking for? Maybe I know where it's at. I'm looking for the, the, the yellow light. Only the people who stay with us get to see this this awesome part. So I'll look for you some yellow light over here, too. I'm hot, too, so you know I mean it. All right, I think you, maybe yellow, yellow as a light will do it. No, I want a really light yellow. So there's this light, light. Uh, no, no, light, light. Really, I want cad yellow light, but I, I want like a cad yellow light. I don't ever make you guys do this. There's like tubes of paint that are just falling to the floor. No, no, no. Yeah, I've got yellow ozolite. What? Yes. All right, here it is. This is cad yellow light. 
okay. life pad. Because there's something on the painting that's really bugging me. What's that? The value up here is not light enough. Oh, really? Not to me. To you? Not to me. I'm going to get a little of my green onto my brush. Just a little. And I'm going to see if I can't get there. <laughs> With my yellow light. And I'll know in a couple seconds. Oh, yeah, I can. Because what I should have is a value of, on the branch above. This is just a weird feeling I have, guys. I just have to deal with it. Can you guys see the difference? Let's look back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just. And you're not going to get it with the one yellow. So, yes, this sort of answers that. I'm going to add a little white to it. I'm going to lighten this sucker up even more. So the answer is yes, you can mix anything with your primaries. Sometimes a color has a power in it. You remember how I said I would have used like a like a yellow light in this at the beginning? But I hate to make you buy new paint. I get a lot of a, a lot of letters about, you know, budgets and feeling stressed about the expense of art. I don't want to ever make anyone feel like they've got to have a color, right? That there's something, but look at that glow. Anyone see the glow or is it just my crazy eyes? <laughs> when I paint a painting, painting, like when I paint, paint, paint a painting, a lot of times, you know, I'm in that space where I can grab any of the colors that I feel like I might want. Oh, see, now that branch is like popping. And I can come in and add some of these glowing colors. These distant, look at this distant space back here. Those should be, yeah, so you can really see it. Even on top of this, another little, little layer. Hopefully you guys can see these a little better. So that's just a feeling I had, and it's just something to show you if you're wondering, like, why would I bother ever having that color? What's in it for me? Well, sometimes this is what's in it for you, is those kinds of saturations or those plan colors. Is it just me, or can we all see the difference? Oh, yeah. Definitely, okay. definitely, definitely see the difference. You see, like... From before to this, it's, oh, just, yeah. it's just vibrant. It's just radioactive, the way sometimes leaves can be in the sunlight. Had to do that. Let's show you that. Weird. I have that tube and I never get to use it. So thank you for letting me use my tube of paint. <laughs> Be good to yourselves. Cut yourself a break. Put something down you've been carrying that you don't need to absolutely have on your heart. Be good to each other. Cut somebody else a break. Maybe it's in the grocery line. Maybe they have two items and you have a hundred. Let them go by. You know, just do something good in the world for yourself and other people. And we want to see you at the easel really soon, especially tomorrow. I actually think that's going to be an easier painting. See you really soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.